I will. Accessible. I'm accessible. <laughs> Okay, I'd like to call the uh, planning board meeting of May 4th to order. Um, first order of business we have in front of us tonight. Uh, let's order due to meeting from the last minutes and uh, upon no objections or modifications, I will entertain a motion for approval of the meeting minutes and then we can move on to the scheduled matter. agenda, this is a full agenda, this is the most people I've ever seen here in my tenure of planning board chairman, so without further ado, let us get started. The first order of business tonight we have in front of us, uh, Mary Jean Yango and family would like to present an application for a variance request to construct an addition behind their existing home on Park Avenue. So I would like to offer the floor to Mr. Barone, I believe. Correct, thank you. Okay. Um, I'm here tonight on behalf of Mary Jean and Jack Engel. They're in the audience tonight. If you have any questions for them, we'd be happy to answer them. We, uh, is it on? Is the mic on? No, no, we don't normally have the mic on, but we can turn it on for you since we have so many bodies in here. <coughs> is it, is it it's not on. I'll turn it on. He's turned it on. plan and uh, when Will Barham looked at the original application 
and he had a tape location that we were working off of. So we took the responsible decision to get an instrument survey done on the property. Make sure our setbacks were correct. They are. Setbacks were fine. Well, then Tom Pellet called me with bad news. He says, we have too much lot coverage. 25% is allowed. And they're between 30 and 31%. <coughs> and so the variance is asking for 31%, just to give us a fraction of percent of margin error. Uh, so, uh, I, I, you folks all have a copy of the plan and so on. We looked at trying to make the room smaller, but to meet the code would be ridiculous. I mean, it would wind up an 8 by 10 bedroom. Uh, the bedroom now, as proposed, is 14 by 16 outside dimensions, so it's not huge. So we really don't want to reduce that. So uh, what we're requesting from the Zoning Board of Appeals, and of course we have to come to the Planning Board first, is a variance to all 31% lot coverage instead of 25% allowable. Answer any questions yet? Um, I live on Park Avenue. I've known the angle since I've been there. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to defer my questions on the board to present any questions. If they don't cover any of the topics that I might be interested in, then move on. I have a question. Did you set out all the variants to everybody within 500 feet? We did. We set out 90 feet of notice. I couldn't believe it, but uh, what I did, the, the town of Webster has a program in the assessor's, in the assessor's office. Mm -hmm. and you say, I need everybody within 500 feet of the boundaries of this property. And he said, you're not going to believe this. Yeah, 95 names yet. Some of the people are in California, <laughs> so I don't think they showed up tonight. Did but, you get any responses? Uh, we didn't get any uh, responses from anyone. So uh, no objection about No objections. As a matter of fact, I believe Mary Jean said that she submitted some paperwork tonight with signatures of neighboring property owners indicating that they were in favor and support of the project. Uh, just for the board's knowledge, Will does in fact have a signature sign off for the respondents that have been written. And no objection to you. Unless we place signs out at the property, so if anybody has a question, they can always call the village. Of course, we have to appear before the zoning board of appeals also. <laughs> Aesthetic finishes. Obviously, I you make the assumption that everything will match the house, or be in keeping with the, yeah, the, the house, our, the existing our, house. Our goal is to have the addition not look like an addition, look like it's part of the original. Um, match the siding, match the roof, and um, we're going to do a reverse gable on, on the back coming off the house, so it's going to be aesthetically pleasing even from the rear. You can't really see the addition from the road, but even from the back, it'll be nice looking. Seven grade, no side basement, basement structure. Mm -hmm. It's going to have a crawl space. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the addition we did 40 years ago has a crawl space as well, so we'll match it. It's going to have its own heating system because it's so far away from the furnace in the house that we're going to put its own furnace and air conditioning system in that room. So the addition is going to be having. Yeah, it'll have its own heating air conditioning. Public comment? Anybody have any thoughts? I see thumbs up. Does everyone think that uh, aging in place is a good thing and to keep our good folks in the village? Yes. All right, that's what I'd like to see. Unanimous. <laughs> <laughs> okay then. Um, there are no other questions or comments. Any other final thoughts from the board? No, no good things. No questions. Okay. So then I will entertain a motion for a positive recommendation to the Webster Village Zoning Board of Appeals for a variance 
for 31% lot coverage for the construction of a single story addition at the 63 Newark Avenue. Okay, I'll make that motion. Seconded. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. I've got to say, I was a little worried when I saw all these people are Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you think they were going to line up against you? It must have been. Judson Street. I understand new residents to the village, and they would like to construct an accessory structure of 120 square feet in lieu of the 100 square foot maximum size accessory structure allowed by village code. Mark and Kayla, present your case. Uh, hi, my name is Mark Cardo. My wife Kayla. Um, we're both uh, we're both teachers. Kayla actually teaches over at Plank South Elementary. Uh, we moved into the village in January and uh, beautifully recommended home. And uh, we want to make sure that we take care of the, the yard and the outside and everything and with uh, the homes layout, the one car garage and the finished basement and whatnot, we need the extra storage um, for the lawnmowers and for the things we, we are uh, doing our own landscaping we're having the lawn be done. Um, so, the limit is 100 square feet, but the extra room will really help us out to have the equipment that we need. Um, so, this is the variance just for the extra 20 square feet, I believe. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. We have uh, so it has the signatures of 17 of our neighbors. Um, no objections. We're happy to put we may even happy to help out our neighbors with the equipment that we have. <laughs> <laughs> Careful! <laughs> <laughs> Shed that they're proposing sits way back in the corner of the lot, so no, I think it's great. Thank you. And just so everybody knows, the zoning board is actually looking into changing the code from 100 square feet to 120 square feet, or changing it per zoning area. Because, like for instance, the uh, old village area we call uh, their lots are a little smaller, <coughs> but some of the other areas have bigger lots, like. The ones over what we call New Shants and the Shants area. So stay tuned.
for the construction of a 120 square foot accessory structure on the existing property at 237 Jefferson Street. Anyone care to make that motion? I'll make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you. Next step is only board of appeals. <clears throat> Okay, the next order of business, and I will beg Mr. Van Epps' indulgence and the Brittany Woods team, if you wouldn't mind if I change up the agenda real quick, move number four into number third slot, because you guys can be a little bit more involved, we can deal with that. Um, fourth item, hopefully quickly, and then we'll have our full Sure thing. Thank you. All right, so. Um, the next order of business will be to hear Mr. Eugene Stahlbush's presentation for his proposal to demolish an existing home structure at 87 Kirchner Park. Hi, my name is uh, Fred Stahlbush and I'm, I'm uh, Eugene's brother and I I'm, I'm have his power of attorney and stuff so I can legally speak for him, I guess. Um, uh, there's a home on 87 Kircher Park. My, my brother has lived here in, in Webster for about 40 years in that home. And, and working <coughs> with the building inspector, Will's been a, been a real blessing to have uh, uh, made the decision to uh, tear the home down. Um, and um, uh, I believe, you know, we, 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 we did an application, I believe, that was probably submitted to this group. Professionals, so you're you're aware of that, and uh, going to demolish the home, and I, and I anticipate the question is, well, what's going to happen to the lot? And uh, of course, based on on approvals um, of, of this board, I'm I'm sure I have a, a representative of Habitat for Humanity here, and my brother would like to donate that that home to that organization. It's in a wonderful spot in the village. I, I did some growing up here from fifth grade through uh, sophomore in, in high school, went to RLT and Ridgecrest Elementary. And so I'm a little bit familiar with the area. So that's what, uh, I mean, we really hope we can forge ahead on that. It's, it, it's not just a thought to go with Habitat. Uh, I mean, that's what we'll do, um, you know, if, if we're allowed to uh, ahead and get this home demolished. Also, just for your edification, the, the wrecking contractor, we've already signed a contract with that, that company, pending, of course, you know, your approval. And um, ready to move ahead as, as really as soon as we can. I've uh, been here for about six months, uh, no, about three, three months helping my brother out. I actually live in Colorado now. And, uh, I don't know if this is good or bad. I was in Boy Scouts with Billy Southwell, so <laughs> that was uh, that's pretty neat. I hope I hope to run into him on here. So I don't know if there's anything else I should mention or any questions. Just let me know. All right. So basically, your desire is to demolish the house and turn it back into a lot. Um. Yes. Yes. That's correct. All right. So part of the demolition, obviously, it has to conform to your state code rule 56 because of the existing asbestos within the home. There is a provision in code room 56 which says you can demolish a home in place with asbestos in place. There are certain protocols that you have to follow. I'm sure the wrecking company, I understand, Empire Wrecking is a contract of choice. They are familiar with the process. They would have to follow your state protocols. Um, but first and foremost, and I don't know if this has been done yet, is um, code, the provision in Code Rule 56 is predicated on a le written letter of commendation. So is the structure is written off on it and says it is condemned? Well, I am pending the board's approval. I will be sending that letter. I already have a file on the property, my inspection report, and based on the inspection report and the evidence that I have, I can uh, write the letter to New York City. Okay. Um, so, in, as far as you're concerned, you do not see any other recourse to save this structure? No, no. I'm, uh, by training and, and profession, I'm an engineer. I'm not an architectural, architectural engineer. Um, I do now, since I've been re 
hired a lot of home repair, et cetera, for people. I know how to estimate the costs, and, and we think the best thing for, because of the state of the property, um, is is to demolish it and, and let someone start anew there through, you know, through Habitat, basically. And for your edification, we would, Will's been very good at educating me, and uh, along with the con uh, wrecking contractor, we've are, we've also signed a contract with the, uh, the QA QC air monitoring uh, folks. That's that's also been taken care of again pending right. pending that's this board's decision. Right. That's all part of the code rule fifty six protocols that have to be followed. Um, so, um, does the board have any questions? You're going to demolish it? They're going to rebuild? Well, right now, uh, we're, we're in really preliminary discussions. We intend to donate it to an organization and, the land. and have a dad has the first shot at it. The land? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. <coughs> Well, certainly, until it's turned over to another owner, I, I know that there's the expectation, the covenants of the village to, you know, mow, mow the yard, take care of it, and maintain it, certainly, and, and, and we'll see to that until such time that hopefully, you know, we can, we can get it to an organization and donate it. The concrete slabs going up to the house, are you also taking those out? You... We're taking the side, yes, the, the sidewalk, Going, up to, going up to the house. Also, the the old foundation for a one car garage that was there. And um, my understanding is, according to the covenants, that the driveway why the driveway does not have to be demolished. Um, and and that would kind of be dependent if, if Habitat is interested, if they want it there, fine. If not, we'll we'll we'll, we'll put that right into the contractor's scope to demolish it. So does that answer your question? Are you going to leave the existing trees? Yes, there's, yeah, there's no, it's a good question, but no, there's no trees proximal that have to be taken down with the house demolition. Okay, um, public comment. Mr. Mayor. Has the historic comment oh, that? He's about to ask the same question I was asking. The historic committee been notified to rule on this? They are aware of the situation, and if the board votes for a positive recommendation for the issuance of a demolition permit, it will be predicated on the sign-off approval of the historic uh, committee I, I, I to say wondered, that there is My project was held up for about six months waiting for that letter that never seemed to come mm -hmm. from the historic committee. They are aware of the situation. I they notified the president of the Historic Commission. I'm sorry? I notified the president of the Historic okay. Commission by a phone call. <clears throat> and we just missed their last meeting that they had. So they, they're not having another meeting for two, maybe three weeks. Okay. <clears throat> so, Thank you. Um, Thank you. Um, so I guess, uh, any other comments? Mr. Green? What are the structural problems? Is it foundation buckled or what? Yeah, what, it's, uh, there are major cracks, and when I say major, they're about three quarters of an inch to an inch at three of the four corners all the way around the house. A uh, major beam is out uh, that holds the support beam, or a major post is out that holds the support beam, which is for the major part of the structure for all three floors. And the Roof itself has had a hole in it for I don't know how long, and it has allowed the elements to come through. And you can see where the water has just made its way down each and every floor, um, compromising the joists, the rafters, the floors, everything all the way through. So, in your professional opinion, having been through mm -hmm. structures in your mm -hmm. tenure, she's a golfer. Salvage. Is there any of that in the house? Yeah. I, mean, I, I guess to the best, it, it, it's a very <laughs> conventional old 
older type home. I, I, I do not know of anything or have seen anything very ornate. It doesn't have to be ornate. How old is the house? Well, I don't know, Gene. No. 40. You, I think it was 40. 40? 40? Well, people buy doors, old doors, mantelpieces. It was built in 1915. Yes. That's correct. 1915. Yep, 1915. That's good. They told me things there that are worth saving. I just bring that up. Well, and, and Will was in there with me, so yeah. he's more of a pro. Uh, there, there's. Without getting into detail, uh, there's more than structural issues. Um, I'll just leave it at that. There's sanitary issues. To this lady's point, though, there are there is a local company that would be more than happy to just go in and see it if there's anything salvageable. It would be unsafe for anybody to go in there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying. So the condemnable nature of the property would overshadow any hope of anybody working their way through that property. Put it this way. Uh, one of my responsibilities to the fire department is to notify them of a structure that's vacant and we notify them uh, verbally by letting them know the condition of the house and also I'm waiting for my signs to come from the sign company but we've posted. You have three different types of signs. You have a sign that's just a square, with the red in the middle and the white background, or the white uh, border line. That says, okay, there's no structural issues in here. You can enter the house if something's going on and you can take care of the fire. Then there's the next sign that has the line that goes through that says, okay, you gotta be careful. There's some structural issues, but it's still okay. Then there's a sign that says, do not go in. This is a let it burn house. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So then my your question is, and there may be things but nobody's going in to get them. Yeah. And nobody yeah. will be allowed to go in to get them just because of the nature of the structure itself. Mm -hmm. So, okay. If there are no other comments from the public, let's take it back to the board. Um, if there are no other comments, then um, what we can do here tonight is we can make a positive recommendation. Sorry? Who oh, you sent your motion? Oh. Just, just. Where is that? What? Yeah, the, the secret process is really a don't go on the train for next week. But <laughs> all right. So before we uh, entertain a motion, uh, I need to quickly go through the uh, seeker application here. And just make sure everything is as it should be. Applicant with listed Eugene Stallboy, demolition of the home. Address, residential, over 50 years old. Council of uh, Guidance. Uh, I can entertain a motion for a type 2 seeker. Okay. Second. 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 All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now we can make the recommendation for the issuance of a demolition permit uh, with the one stipulation that the Historic Commission actually gives the final signature sign-off, and then Will, you can issue the demolition permit, and then the install brushes can go about their business, and you will be overseeing the process. Yes. Has it happened? Mm -hmm. All right, so I will entertain a motion for positive or negative recommendation for the issuance of a demolition permit of 87 Park. I make a motion for a positive. 
the oh, motion. Yeah. 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 The motion permanent. Eighty seven question part. Yes, second. Any seconds? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. The one condition is final approval of the store commission. Well, oh, thanks for letting us move ahead. I greatly appreciate that. Okay. And, uh, Unfortunately, we need to move before the Historic Commission no. signs off on it to start permanently, but once that's done, then we can proceed with the permit, take care of it, and then... Now, the property will be completely demolished, removed, foundations, restored to a level lot. So, yes. Uh, I mean, the only reason I'm hesitating, if, if Habitat wants it, wants the donation, we'll see what what they want. Right now, the scope is to simply a slight dome over the, where the existing foundation is to account for any settling and, and seed it. Well, that's you, you that's you remove the foundation in its entirety, correct? The, the foundation, my understanding from the wrecking company, is is collapsed folded, if you will, into the into the basement. That's the standard procedure for that. I, I understand. Mm -hmm. no, so. no, well, we can do it. We can, you know, give them an alternate to completely remove the foundation. That's what they should. Initially, do. this price, we were just going to break the foundation up and then fill the remaining void with, you know, a compactable fill. And the problem with thinking you can do that is the fact that once you've done all the house with asbestos in place, you contaminate the foundation, so you cannot well, leave it, behind the contamination. The masonry site. is cleanable. We can get clearance on, 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 clean, on a masonry basement. And then once we get clearance, we can bury the foundation. Yeah, they, this is administrative yeah. stuff that can be handled at the permit level. <coughs> okay. okay. So we'll get out of The bottom line is obviously you will have to conform to New York State Code Rule 56 if that's the same protocol. So if that mandates that everything be gone, then everything will be gone. Okay. Now, the final order of business this evening is Mr. Mark Van Epps, develop, developer of the Brittany Woods Townhomes Project. We would like to construct <coughs> multi-family residential properties on a 13.4 uh, acre site on the corner of Phillips Road and um, Bridge. So, for the benefit of people who are here tonight who may not have been fully aware of the project, if you would give us the clip note version. Sure. Great. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Scott Sedali. I'm an attorney, um, uh, and uh, I'm here on behalf of the applicant, uh, Mark Van Epps, um, and I have uh, Nathan uh, from TY Land, who's our engineering uh, firm, who's working with us uh, on this project. Um, as well, we can be here tonight. Um, he's got some exhibits and stuff like that. Uh, so the, uh, the, the project um, relates to um, property um, that is on the corner uh, of Ridge and, and Phillips, as, uh, as was just, just mentioned. Um, it's currently owned by Wegmans. Um, and so um, the, uh, my client is under contract with Wegmans to, to, to purchase the property. Um, we recently, over the past six months, went through the uh, zoning process, um, and in uh, March of this year, uh, the uh, property was rezoned uh, by uh, unanimous vote of the village board uh, to uh, go from uh, plain unit development to uh, residential RM. And so, with that, uh, with that uh, unanimous vote, that opened up uh, the way uh, the the path for my client to move ahead uh, with his uh, proposed project. And the project uh, will be a 70-unit um, uh, townhome uh, uh, apartment complex. Um, and uh, my, um, my client currently has uh, two, two existing uh, projects that will be similar in, that are similar in nature. One's out in Chile, one's out in Gates. I have a, uh, in, in, my, in my materials, which I provided to the board, um, uh, photos of those uh, properties 
uh, which show which uh, show uh, the, the high quality um, that my client brings um, to his to his properties. Um, not only would uh, my client be developing these these properties, uh, but also be um, managing and, and 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 also maintaining. So this is not a uh, build it, sell it off. This is build it. I'm going to own it. Um, and so um, what we're seeking here tonight. Um, is a uh, is a is an area of variance uh, for for the property. Um, as I as I noted, uh, the property uh, the zoning <coughs> was, was recently changed to, to residential and uh, under the village code um, for uh, as, it, as it pertains to RM uh, for, uh, and and as it pertains to townhomes, uh, the, the the village code says that there should be or there has to be. Uh, one acre per townhouse building. And so the way we uh, have set it up and the way our, our site plans call for and what has been discussed since uh, we first uh, proposed this project last, last summer uh, was that we would be looking to do 14 town, townhouse buildings. And so the, the, the real property uh, in, in question that we're talking about is 13.4 acres. So the request is that um, instead of uh, the uh, requirement being one acre per townhouse building, uh, we're seeking uh, a variance to allow one townhouse building per 0 0.96 acres. So the request again from one acre to 0.96 acres uh, per townhouse building. So I'm sure a lot of folks have questions. Uh, we sent out our mailing. I don't know how many um, how many neighbors uh, we had. The, the, the list was a couple of pages, um, but so we sent out uh, obviously our notice to all, all the neighbors, and you know a lot of the folks who are here tonight have been uh, at our prior meetings. So we had uh, you know we had uh, a couple of meetings before the uh, village board to discuss the zoning. Uh, we actually also um, did an open house. Uh, back in uh, back in March, uh, where myself and uh, our, our engineer uh, answered questions from neighbors about the actual project, and you know, I, I happen to have uh, pneumonia that week, so I was only here for about 45 minutes. But um, our engineer um, Jack, who's also with T.Y. Uh, Lynn, was here for uh, two or three hours answering questions. So we had a, a decent turnout, not as big as tonight. Uh, but we had a decent turnout. We we sat and uh, Jack, uh, you know, and myself answered the questions of the concerned uh, neighbors. Uh, so and the other the other point uh, is that you know what we're again what we're doing tonight. When everyone's thinking about their questions, what we're doing tonight is we're we're asking just the, the scope is limited to this variance. So can we build 14 buildings on 13.4 acres? Is the scope. So, can we have, will, will the village uh, will the board recommend a variance of one building per 0.96 versus one building per one acre? That's, that's really the scope. We're allowed to build, uh, and we still have to go through the site plan approval, of course, but you know, per the code, we're, we're allowed, per the current zoning, to, to build townhomes on this land. We are allowed to build townhomes on this land. It's just how many. So when we're looking at the the benefit versus <coughs> any potential detriment, um, you know, the benefit we've been, you know we've we've gone over that at, at prior uh, meetings between before the village board and the the Webster. Um, I had to read this to make sure I get the name right. Webster Economic Development Alliance, um, as most people know, um, um, issued a, a nice uh, write up um, on the proposed project. Um, and the, uh, according to the to their to their write up, um, the uh, townhouse building plan will increase the value of real property. Um, it's currently assessed at I think three hundred thousand, maybe four hundred thousand. Uh, we, we believe the value of the property uh, once developed will you know be between eight and eleven million dollars. Uh, so the the, the benefit the, so the, the benefits of the village. Is the is the increased tax dollars? I mean, that's you're going from a, a very small tax liability 
that Wegmans is paying right now to a potentially pretty large tax liability that my client will be will have to pay um, because we all pay taxes. Um, on top of that, you know, it's going to increase uh, increase the foot traffic to Main Street. As we talked about in prior meetings, there's a lot of businesses that are bailing uh, on Main Street, and there needs to be an influx of, um, of dollars um, and of people into into the village of Webster. Um, and uh, I know what's been raised. So, so when you're thinking about questions, again, that, that's what the scope is. Certainly, ask any question about the but remember that's the scope. We, there will be further meetings on this. There's going to be, even if, if this gets approved, then we'll go to the next round, will be uh, site plan. And site plan will be really uh, the uh, nitty gritty of, of this project will be reviewed by, reviewed by the planning board at that point. And, uh, certainly, we were ready for any, uh, for any questions uh, about this and then uh, in the future about that. Um, the question then, uh, because we know we can build 13 buildings, right? We all know. There's 13.4 acres consensus. We can build 13 buildings. So why do we need uh, 14 buildings? Why do we need this variance? And so, um, you know, as I said, the the, the the proposal from the beginning related to this to our, to, to our plan for the, for the 14 buildings. All of the analysis that was done by the Economic Development Alliance uh, is based on the idea of this of this 14 building uh, project. Um, but there's also um, physical reasons why uh, a, a 14 building uh, project uh, has to, has to, uh, has, is our, our only option going forward and why we need this variance. And so I'll turn it over to Nathan to give his uh, uh, 101 on that. Sure. Um, so the physical, so the, mic, the, mic. Sure. So the, the physical restraints on, on this property, um, uh, we have wetlands on, on both sides. Turn the mic on. Sure. So I'll talk about, um, basically, so we have wetlands on this side of the site. We have wetlands over here. Um, this portion of the property is, is really undevelopable due to setbacks, etc. Um, we also need to align our driveway here across from the other roadway um, for best access practices. Um, also, as a recommendation from the village was to provide um, pedestrian access through the site. So separating the, bu the buildings is desired. Um, and you know, due to, to grading restraints, also uh, leads to having us be extra building on, on the property. So that's really it. Just one question. Yep. Where is Phillips Road there? Which Phillips is right here on the top. So you're going to be accessing right across from Heartland Estate? Yeah. Yep, right here. Are we yeah. going to have a light there? Ridge Road is right here. Okay. Did anybody ever do a traffic study? Uh, yes. Yeah, yes. We got Xerox. There's we got the name. Village, we got it. I've never seen the cars going across the highway looking for traffic. Sure, that, that, that exact question was raised uh, at multiple uh, hearings that we had uh, before the village board. And, um, yes, the traffic study was done, um, and it was found that it would not, uh, and again, I'm not about the engineer doing this, but it was found that there would not be a significant increase in traffic. What is it? Oh, you're going to ask people You know, I mean, I, I guess my only, my just my last point is, is again, as to, um, you know, what we're talking about here. We're talking about a, a variance. I would view this, uh, I, I would view this request as a uh, de minimis variance request. It's a small, we're talking about 0 0.04 acres. Um, is the is, 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 there, is the variance request. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, we're not here for site plan approval. There will be site plan approval in June. Um, should we make it through this 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 hurdle? Again, this is simply for the variance request. So, thank you. So, if memory serves correct, early on when this was first brought to the board, 
Wasn't it we who asked you to break up the townhouse row along Phillips Road into smaller chunks instead of one gigantic block of a row house structure, which thus now forces you into a very Correct, correct, correct. Right. 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 So, right. Right. so that, that, one of my, my points was that well, there was kind of in every conversation we had mm -hmm. with the village was about the way we're going to do it, and it's always been this this structure since we've had our conversation. Right. So I just correct. wanted to test my Thank understanding you. that you know, the design, this is not the original design. The original design was one per one building per acre or less. And then from an aesthetic perspective, we proposed to you to say break it up. And then that brings us to where we are today with the need for the small variance request for the additional building. Correct. The total site area doesn't accommodate 15 buildings. Correct. Right. So Thank you for bringing it up. Mm -hmm. so what now. is it going to look like then? It's going to look like that. My question would be, but we're probably jumping ahead, would be traffic issues. Right, and, and, and I, I don't know that I submitted it in these materials, but I can submit that, and it'll, I'm sure um, our, our Jack, our, our other engineer, submitted that with his proposed site plan, but I can supply them with the board with the traffic study. That is it was given to we went through the zone. Is it in there? Is it in my, it's in my material. It's in there. It's in there. Yeah. <laughs> I apologize that the, the, the materials were lengthy. Yeah. I, won't apologize, I won't apologize about the philosophy. There's a lot of material. <laughs> oh, okay. If you want, if you, I can speak my copy. No, it's okay. Okay. See, I didn't hear that because of God damn time. This is a kind of just a little question. Yeah. How many separate units are going to be? You're going to have 14 buildings, but how many apartments, if you will, are townhouses? <coughs> I mean, how many people can live in this place? Is that for? I'm, I'm sorry. Are we are we to address the questions, or how does that work? I will open it up to public comment. Please raise your hand, state your name, and your address. Okay, my name is John Nardi. I live in uh, the estates right across the street from these, where the Heartland estates where they want to build. My concern is one traffic because it's bad there now, but apparently they've done a study, although I've never seen the cords going across the road. Uh, but you know, we get an awful lot of traffic there for Xerox, from Phillips, from our area. We have 40 some units where we live. I, I don't know how many in Phillips, but there's hundreds, I guess. And these people are proposing even more, which I didn't know, but you had already granted, and I must have missed the meeting, the authority for these people to build there. So all I'm asking is how many units are there going to be? Not buildings, units. So it gives you an how idea how many people are going to build there. Yeah. So, do you want to there will be 70, 71 units. 71, 70 units. Yep, and, right. you know, and, 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 and now obviously the 71 more hours. Hours. Sure. And, and yeah, this, this, this was, uh, I, I believe, you know, in other words, this is a, um, you know, I, I think the reason you know, a, lot of, a lot more folks know about tonight's uh, meeting is because we send out the mailer. Yeah. Um, the, uh, we, the, 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 the request for the zoning uh, that was published in the Herald. Mm -hmm. So, I guess read the Herald. <laughs> Are we open? Anyone We're else? open. All right. Uh, I'm Don Mooney. I live on the corner of Phillips and Bridge. Well, not quite. 75 feet in from the Phillips Road. 
That's fine property. I, I see that that used to be green the last time we were here. Would you turn around? Maybe we can all look at it. Um, you see what I'm talking about? Here. Here up there, right there on the corner of Phillips. That's not Phillips. <coughs> Ridge and Phillips. Ridge and Phillips. Right where your finger right where the finger is. Right. right. He's back up there. Well, whatever that. Yeah, it's from the corner in 75 yeah, feet. That's the first property. Past the. All right. Is that part of this project, or is this going to be just turned loose to let it grow? What's that? This corner. That's 75 feet by 300. Yeah, that's going to stay the way it is. Pardon me? It's going to stay. Stay what? Um, trees, whatever's there now, it's not going to be developed. Yeah, but whatever it is now is not what it's going to be because I'm not going to finish or not going to take care of it, all right? So I'm taking care of this. Now, if this goes through, and I'm just going to let it go. So that'll be a woods, just like you see on the back side, the okay. south side of the property. So that's what it's going to be. It's going to be a... a a oh, woods. Is that okay? We, was there a question? We, we, we haven't determined, determined that yet. Huh? We haven't determined that yet. Yeah, I heard there might well, be a driveway. Well, there. you no, have got to determine that. We're not at that stage yet, sir. We're not at the planning board yet. Okay, so, I mean, I, I just wasn't sure. Was, it, was that a question or just a public comment? The last meeting we had here, uh, the answer was that uh, the, the way it's being taken care of now is the way it will be. And I said, no, it won't, because I'm the one that's taking care of it. So, okay, so somebody promised so it, it'll be, it would be, it was somebody be, promised it, it, it would be a moment or yeah, you know, it's sure. boy, we'll take care of it. It's, you're not yeah, right. Care. I've heard that story before. Yeah, I know well, a lot of you know, people. Sir, you know, the, the one thing I know, I mean, it has been vacant forever, and so yes, neighbors like like yourself have had have had to take on that responsibility. I certainly sympathize with you uh, in that regard, but you know, my client coming in. Um, is going to be developing this, and, and certainly it's going to be his responsibility to, to, to maintain it. And I know that, that, the, that the planning board and, and, and is going to make sure that, um, and, 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 and the building will make sure that, that he does maintain it. And we have every intention to. I guess what he's saying is it will no longer be, you will no longer be allowed to maintain that property because it will be listed on Epson's property. And I've been called by Wigman's to stay off of it 45 years ago. <laughs> but but uh, it never did work. You know, but that's all right. Whatever, yeah, whatever, whatever happens, I have not, I'm not going to be around long enough before these things are built, but that's that's another story. Uh, <laughs> let it go. Let it go. But you ought to put that green in there. Last, the last map or layout I had, it was green. It was nice. You're going to turn it over to the Forever Wild or some stupid thing. Yeah. Well, there is, there, is a, there is a provision in the village code also for it to be developed into a amenity to the village. That, has still, that is still to be explored. So that, but that is not germane to the task in front of us tonight, is to get through the recommendation to the zoning board for a grant of the variance for the number of buildings per a lot size. So you sir have a question? Okay. Just a quick question for my own edification. I missed the last few meetings on uh, Bruno Gosman 1463 Bridge. Just curious out of the whole uh, property what uh, Percentages being developed, how much has to stay uh, wetlands, and where are the proposed retaining ponds located as to addresses on Ridge Road? Sure. Um, so it, basically, as you can see here in, in blue, are going to be the stormwater detention and infiltration basins. Um, which is going to be located on, I guess, the northeast corner of, of, the, of the lot. Any, any idea where that corresponds to existing homes on Ridge Road, number-wise, or not? Um, sure. So basically, it would be almost behind 1441 Ridge Road to 1437. Okay. And it's, what's the size of the whole property? 
I mean, I know you're developing sure. 13.4, uh, right? And I mean, what what's the total property? The total developable property size is 13.4. So that's okay. So that's the the wetlands are or the areas that you can't develop aren't part, part of, of the total acreage. That's total acreage. Yes. So okay. the, the the area behind is not part of the property that you own, or you own it and you can't develop it. The area here, or yeah, on behind the houses and where you know in between the the retaining ponds and the the homes on the sure. Road. Uh, yeah, over on this area, there's there's wetlands. <coughs> Same with over on this this side and this area it, with setbacks and everything, you really can't put buildings in there. So. Okay, and and that's, I mean, just for now, or, or is that something that might come in later? I mean, it's, is it any more going to be developed in between the retention ponds and the homes behind Ridge Road, or is that non-developable? That would not be developable because of setbacks. Because of setbacks, right. okay. To the property, to the existing property. Okay, so as far, as far up, you said 14? 1441. 41, okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm looking at your print. You're, you're pointing out that much of the area which you didn't shade in for this one is wetlands. Uh, and you say there's going to be 71 units. Some of them are two or three bedroom. I think we said some are three bedroom. Right. This implies that there will be kids. So you're telling me there's wetlands, which of course some boys may play in, but the basic play area is that narrow strip of land along Ridge, or along Phillips Road where we can play ball and chase our baseball, footballs, and that kind of stuff all over the street. This is the only area being provided for any kids to do anything in because it's going to be the only open area that's not wetland. So basically, that becomes the only play area for the kids that will be living here. So. I think it would be better off to eliminate one unit, the one that would be most logical is the one there on the north side next to the ponds and make a small play area where kids can do something because you put that many kids in that tight area with no place to go, you're asking for trouble. So first of all, there's not that many three bedroom buildings. So Two bedrooms going to have kids. There's not going to be that many kids. And, the, and the, the kids do not play outside anymore. They don't play ball. They don't. It's mostly uh, don't the, play the community. Uh, if, if it bears, which we anticipate, I already have a couple so, communities, and they don't play outside. Do we want to well, I just make it they're just tight? Do we have no room? So. Um, I mean, if the, if the development mirrors our, uh, our project in Chile and Gates, you know, our, 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 we, there won't be very many uh, nuclear families. It'll be mostly, um, you know, your 20 and 30 something um, young professionals um, with not a lot of kids. We don't anticipate there being a lot of kids. So not like every single unit we have has two kids. That's not, you're not looking at 150 kids, okay? You're looking at probably, you know, I'd say, I don't know, Mark could probably tell me better how many units actually in our other properties. Well, nobody's going to want to bring kids there if they have no place to play. That was so, that's, so you're definitely oh, discriminating sure. against families. Uh, okay. Certainly, you know, families are, are welcome, non families are welcome too. There is an alternative of uh, Ben, the developer, however, Harvey's Park. Right there. Uh, it's a big open area that the kids can play with. That's, that there's so Probably three or four acres over there. Yeah. Also, playing ball. And there's basketball courts down far away. Right and it's owned by the village. The village park. Family friendly. Are we in back? Yeah. Um, I'm Laurel Grunt. Oh, I'm here. <laughs> Laurel Grunts of 1455 Ridge Road. Um, I just want to say that I think 71 um, townhomes on 13.4 acres is excessive. It needs to be, you need to um, consider saving some green space. 
and also including that um, around the boundaries, the property line. Because we are, I'm very much concerned about noise and um, trespassers. And we have dealt with them before, and this is going to add to that problem. And the noise, too. So I, I think as we, as we, as the board mentioned before, um, there's a way to have 71 units in 13 buildings. That isn't what I was saying. I'm saying in the 71 units on 13 acres is excessive. And so, it needs to be cut back and you need to save some green space. So we're, so legally, um, in our original plan was 13 buildings and 71 units. And there's no, nothing in, in, the, in the code that would prohibit us from doing that. But you're, you're here tonight to put more in. We are here tonight to You request. want to expand it from one anchor per house. You want to make it to 0.96 per house. Right, and that and was... And I'm just saying that the whole thing is excessive. It's too many homes for that size lot. And so, uh, as we, as the, as the board had mentioned, and, uh, as uh, uh, Chris had mentioned, I can't pronounce your last name, but I'm not going to try it. I'll just call you Chris if that's cool. As Chris had mentioned, the original plan was 13 buildings. The village had requested that we change it to, to 14 buildings. So, regardless of 13 or 14, if we'd done 13 in the beginning, we could have done 71 units. And again, the request is, is, is for, for a variance so we could just we, we can do 14 units, or 14 buildings, 71 units versus, we could have originally planned 13 units, 71 buildings, and we wouldn't be here tonight, requesting this variance. Scott, just for clarification, the plans say 68 units. Okay. Just want to be clear of that. Okay. <coughs> I've heard three numbers, so what is it? Is that in what Jack recently submitted? Yep. Since they're all numbered, one through sixty-eight. Okay. Yes, the young lady in the back. Um, so, obviously, I, I would assume you guys are all up to speed on everything that has been the concern of the neighbors. I'm Kimberly Schwenzer. Kimberly Schwenzer, and I live at 1449 Ridge Road. Um, I'm assuming that you guys are all abreast of the situation as to what everyone has been concerned about. Two of the major concerns are the wetlands, and I know we're discussing adding an extra unit or not, you know, 0.96 acres per acre. However, this is all part of the grand scheme. The wetlands um, still have, they have not been, um, they have not been charted in years and years and years. So it's very possible that this development is infringing on those, on those wetlands. But the second thing is, and I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but many of us neighbors along that creek there um, experience the cresting of the creek constantly. We're constantly experiencing flooding and things like that. So by adding all this impermeable surface, it's going to really cause a problem for everyone in that downstream, everyone in that area, possibly including the new development. And I know they've done all their tests and all that, but that doesn't, there's all this extra water that had 13 acres to soak into um, that is now going away um, with impermeable surfaces. So I think the whole idea of adding, like, let's see how many units we can fit into our little 13 acres so we can make as much money as possible. I get it. They're in the business to make money. And they're going to say to us what they want to say to make us, to make, you know, I've been sales for years. I get it. They say, you know, to make us happy. But the fact is, you don't need to completely um, make it so dense, such a dense um, space if you're going to build. Because, again, it's just going to cause more problems as far as the, um, the flooding and things like that. And again, not to mention the fact that we do not know the exact delineations of the wetlands because it's been so long since it's been done. So it's very possible that they're building on them. So. Yeah, I mean, I know we've, we've addressed the, 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 the drainage and the wetlands um, at length. And so we had several meetings here. We had an open house 
Um, and you know, certainly, um, I wish more of you guys were at our open house because we sit. Yeah. 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 Read the Herald. Yes, we need to read the Herald. You guys want to read the Herald? No. No. Well, I mean, by oh, for, for the board meetings, by law, that's how. I mean, if, if, honestly. The, so why did you send all the details or the notes for tonight? Because it was by law you sent to us. It wasn't by the finish your heart, right? Uh, yeah. answer, yeah. uh, uh, we always want to comply with the law, so of course whatever requirements <laughs> there are, are yeah. whatever requirements are, we will follow the law. Right. And so well, there's answer the publication, is, the, the public. I mean, that's. I mean, I don't know. We're going into an argument of no, we what is well, going to do because that's we're aware, aware, sir. That's, Please, that's certainly a requirement. Let's not talk over each other. Who's going to answer this question? Well, well it was my. I did for the public. So we could deny and call on the young lady in the back to argue. To, to argue the point of, of notice uh, would actually be more appropriate for the for the, the village board uh, and for the planning board as to what the requirements are. We we did what the requirements were. Okay, so I haven't been addressed yet. So, yeah. My whole idea yeah, so is I'm just saying why why I'm getting your business to make money, not to help the village of Webster, even though they think this is going to be the lifeline that'll help them, which it will not. Um, but just wondering, you know, eliminate a unit if you know. Why push the envelope? Why do we need to, to re, rezone again for you guys? We have to rezone so you could build. Now we have to change the laws so you guys can put an extra unit. Like, just build within the laws. Like, it's bad enough you guys are coming in, but build within the laws. But to at least answer two of your questions, um, the wetlands have been delineated and flagged. They are on the survey. Um, so we located guys. everything. By you guys, not by the DEC. Ma'am, if I, I may, yeah. I am in the construction business. Federal wetlands are very highly regulated. The federal wetland maps are well known to engineers. When they do building layouts, they know exactly. They haven't been done since the 90s. I'll do respect. I call the DEC. That's the problem. They haven't been done since the 90s. The problem that you perceive is not necessarily a problem. The federal wetland delineations are very well known. Did you hear what I said, though? They haven't been done in 20 years or more. The wetland delineations are very well known to engineers. When they do building layouts, they know where they cannot go. I don't think you're hearing what I just said. They have not been done in 20 to 30 years. I don't wetlands think you're grow. listening. The federal wetland delineations yeah. are very well known and defined to engineers. They are mapped out. These are federal documents. Engineers, when they do site plan layouts, know exactly where those federal wetland limitations are, and they cannot put buildings in those wetland areas. Not make it yes, you can, but they have not been remapped in 30 years. They're going by old maps. And if they go in and do it themselves, that doesn't mean it's being done exactly correctly. The DEC, oh my God. are highly delineated, well-known documents. It would be up to the United States government and the geodetic survey team upon request of the United States government to remap the federal level. I understand. I they get know that. where they are. They grow in 30 years. As of now, I've been there for seven years, they've grown. We've seen us, all who live along the ridge, have seen them grow. Land can become wet, but in order to meet a federal wetland designation, the federal government will take that upon itself. Okay, to you're talking maps. down to me, and you're not understanding that I'm saying they have not been done in 30 years by the government. And you're talking down to me, acting like I don't understand Look, what you're saying. No. Can I interject just for a second? Please do. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Hang on a second. Did you hire Jane? Yeah. Yes. Okay, explain that so that she understands. That so, would be very helpful. Yeah. Uh, Gene Flett with Environmental Resources, what he does is he goes out and <clears throat> walks the site, maps out, flags, and, and the well, it was probably done within the last year. Um, so when that, that is done, we then resurvey survey the right. points to match our topographic survey so we know exactly where those are. 
And then the follow-up, Gene sends a report to um, DEC, the Army Corps engineers, and then they determine the exact determination. What are, what are Gene's qualifications? Uh, Gene has been doing that for forever. And he's and been hired by you guys? Yes. Okay. No, no. Hey, <laughs> I know Gene. Gene does not work for them. He does, he's, a, he's, he's an independent. He's an independent contractor. Everybody calls Gene to delineate wetlands. He is the go-to guy. The, the DEC highly respect Gene. I can't tell you any more than that because I know what you're If you think there's shenanigans going on, why would, why would the wetlands be so huge? The wetlands on that property are huge. Let's, let's just okay. Okay. Should we move on. Should we move on to the more public comment? Or? Anybody else? I, I just want to ask why it has to be 14. Why uh, you said it has to be. Uh, do you want it to be or it has to be? That, from the map there, it doesn't make sense to me that it has to be 14. I just don't understand <coughs> where, where you are coming from when you say it has to be Well, yeah, because they ask you to make a change. Into, I'm guessing it's the front row of the link uh, along Phillips. But that doesn't mean it has to be 14. It just means that it can't be one building along Phillips. Yes? For the, for the proposed number of units, it has to be, as the way that the village has requested, it has to be 14. The, villi the village has requested that it has to be 68 units? No. That's okay. a proposal from the developer. Okay. So, again, the units is, is irrelevant to the number of buildings, in, in essence. Because we, we have to be 13 units for 13 acres. But you're requesting for 14 units. And you're saying it has to be 14. I'm telling you that it doesn't have to be. You want it to be 14. The, so the way you worded it is a little deceptive. The, the, the proposal all along has been that, that, that number of units. And so to go from our <coughs> proposal was 13. Yes. And the request then was made to make some alterations, which is why we're now at yes. 14. Okay. So our proposal has always been that number in that range of units. So, okay, but it didn't have to be. You could have taken a building out and reduced based on our base, based on based on um, what is uh, the most uh, the based on based on what our proposal is. That's that's the number of units that we propose, and that's what sure, makes right. in our yeah, estimation this sure, this project yeah. work. So, according to code, on that side. your original proposal. You didn't need to come here and request a variance, correct? Correct. Your need to request a variance was because in the initial meetings and reviews, um, it was suggested that you do not have one great big building. From an aesthetic standpoint, would not be acceptable to the board, and they essentially said, break it up. Correct. Hence your need per code, now you're required, okay, to get that variance request, right? Correct. Okay. Uh, no, not necessarily. Uh, under controlled site uses, which is what this is, which what that means is it falls under the purview of the planning board's approval. In arrangement of buildings, it's uh, 17541- C1, it says the layout of units shall not, shall not, you're an attorney, shall not form long unbroken lines on the exterior wall. So if you were to continue with that plan, you would have required a variance to have a long unbroken line. Okay, fair enough. Right. Yeah. It, it's a right. There would have been a different right. Yeah. Yes, sir. My name is Paul Runs. I'm 1455 Ridge Road, which is east of the project on Ridge Road. I've come to a number of the meetings, uh, the town board meetings, and listening to the uh, developer, the attorneys, and the engineer. My questions are. My main concern was uh, the water uh, infiltration uh, acts. 
their relationship to the drainage creek that runs between, behind all of our houses on Grady Road. In Mr. Mooney's defense, his yard is flooded right now because of our current rain. As well as the engineer for the project admitted how his uh, ignition uh, tanks are supposed to flow down, water takes the least resistance path of resistance. That path is going to generate right to the existing creek, as well as to the number of large wetlands to the east of the property directly behind them from Phillips Road. My other issues are, and I'm not don't mean this derogatory to the developer or the members of his team. We've heard this about the number of houses, how much tax money this is going to bring to the uh, village. <coughs> also, um, I lost one, another thought. Oh, and the other thing is guaranteeing uh, what type of people are going to be in this development. Federal law says you can't guarantee or tell somebody you can or can't live in a facility. He plans on doing that from one of the early meetings by the rent, which is well and good. But after Mr. Ben Epps has decided to retire and gone on, what I'm asking is, where are the guarantees to the immediate public and to the village that the property is going to continue to be maintained the water problem guarantee for the people on Ridge Road, how are they going to maintain, uh, how's the village going to guarantee their public that that's not going to overflow? And how are we going to keep trespassing in the uh, property behind them? Because we have a rampant problem of people trespassing across the properties. I hope I tried to make myself clear. If I haven't, ask me a question. And in defense of Mr. Mooney, his 75 acres that he had meticulously kept manicured to the benefit of the public, and Mr. Van Epps addressed it a little bit, is that still going to be kept the same way? Thank you. I mean, I, I, there was a lot of questions that I felt like she uh, I mean, as far as what the, the, the quality you're talking about is, there's one part was the quality or the quality of people. I mean, I can probably, I mean, and this what we said before, um, is, you know, uh, the rent, um, you know, we're going to How do you guarantee that? Well, our, our, our project is, is based on, you know, how, our, how, how you know, economically we put our project together, together and, you know, on, and on, is an ongoing concern. You know that's what that's what we are. That's, that's, what, that's how we economically are going to make this project move forward in the future is by charging those rents. So the rents will be, as I said, at generally fourteen fifty to fifteen hundred dollars a month. So um, can we? Can anyone guarantee that in the future, fifty years down the down the way? I mean, Mark's actually still a pretty young uh, guy despite his hair color. Still a young guy. You know, he's going to be around for, for a few years, and as I said, he holds on to his property. He, he maintains his property. Um, can anyone guarantee that in 15 years, he's going to sell to someone else, and they're going to, they're going to decide to drop the rent? <laughs> Certainly, there's no real guarantee that that can happen anyway. You know, but that's what you're selling. We're selling what our, and as I said, our, 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 our plan, our goal is to maintain the property. And that's what the rents will be for the foreseeable future in the property, as long as we own that property. Uh, I just got to add one, one thing. Those blue holding ponds there, it looks as though that uh, probably a third of them is in the town. Does anybody know where the town line is? Where the town starts and the village ends? Mm -hmm. Does anybody know where it is? Point it out. I believe it's right along this trip, me from all. No, I mean up on the corner of Phillips and Ridge. Oh. Where does the town start? It? It's right there at the intersection. Right here? Down like this? Oh, all of your lines. Is it's it's you don't know where it is, do you? That's okay. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. But you had to be told. But you had to be told. All right? But, um, so. 
Those ponds are, some of them are in the town. No. No. Right? No. And the other part is in the village. No, they're both in the village. Pardon me? Both those ponds would be in the village. Oh, you just got to move things over. No. no. As it is, they're in the village. They just, uh. <laughs> well, anyway, that's uh, another thing I was trying to say. You know, it's, it's advantage to the village. It's it really is no question about it, tax wise. But uh, I'm that far from the village, but I'm not in the village. Okay, and my next door neighbor is farther away, by the way. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is, you got to take so either either make it all village or make it all town. I mean, it's a big. It, we're correct. talking about a big operation here, but. But that's where that's where you get into trouble. Village and town are, are right there on my line. I look out the window, the dining room window, and there's the village. But I can't get a dime benefit out of it from the from taxes, right? I don't pay village taxes, which is okay too. But I won't get any good out of it either. <laughs> so we can always send a bill. Mr. Chairman, can I address some of that? Yeah, you do a quick. You can sit down now. You don't have to stand. You better talk. Yeah, absolutely. Talk. If he starts talking, you're going to want to sit down. So I'm a preacher, too. So <laughs> I approach it. Okay. Uh, two things about maintenance. Uh, first of all, when it comes to the stormwater facility, the village of Webster, ever since Heartland Estates, has entered into maintenance agreements with anybody who has a pond. So, like, for instance, North Ponds at the end of Kilo River, all of those ponds. We have a uh, stormwater facility maintenance agreement, and every year I send a letter out, and an engineer has to inspect the pond to make sure that it's still functioning according to the specs in which it was designed. If it is not, they're required to go in there and clean it up and make sure it's, it does function that way. So that's the first thing. So we, we, and that agreement goes to Monroe County. It's a legal binding agreement that goes with the property and allows us easement access rights that if they do not maintain it, we will enter the property, maintain it ourselves, and charge it back to the owner. That's number one. Number two, the board is also, uh, the planning board is responsible for making sure that the developer provides the planning board some feasible method assuring that all common lands in the development are properly maintained and such a documented method must be approved by the village board, such maintenance agreements shall include mowing and other landscape services, removal of snow, and all other project needs. So that's in our code. Now, am I God? No. Will I know if that thing's going to flood? Absolutely not. Will I know if that's going to work exactly the way they designed it? I do not know. I have a book in my office that tells me that that can work according to engineer specs. Are engineers always right? Class? No. Okay. But, but, they all operate under the same rules and function and mathematical formulas that they went to school for. And so, when they design these things, they keep all of that in mind. They have the staffs. They're the ones we rely on for their expertise. That's why they go to school. That's why we have doctors. Are doctors always right? No, but you still go to doctors, don't you? Okay. Um, so that being said, we do everything we can within our power to protect you. That's not to say we can cover every single contingency, but we will do everything within our power. And we have laws on the books that protect you. Some of the laws you don't like, but your neighbor likes. So we're, we're going to do our best as a village to protect you and your properties. Also, thirdly, and the reason I brought this up, uh, because Mr. Woody reminded me, the town as a copy of these plans, and they're reviewing them as well because of the watershed. It is so close to the town that I wanted to make sure the town was reviewing these plans, and we're going over the engineer specs. As a matter of fact, Ben, or um, Benway, Jeff Benway, he's a civil engineer himself over at the town, so I respect his opinion and his authority in this as well. So, Just one X, one, and then I'll shut up. Uh, <laughs> All that creek, I, I explained a couple times ago, all that creek carries a third of the water from the water tanks all the way down behind our house. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
and it goes through a hole like that under the under 404, mm -hmm. which own it's owned by the state. Okay, so is there is there any way if that gets plugged up, they gotta call the state, not the town, not the village. They call the state, and then 500 trucks show up. I've, I've seen them happen. They pull up there, and <coughs> 20 guys are standing around, and one guy's pulling the. That's our standard operating procedure. You gotta know it by now. I've seen it all. Over. 60 years, I've seen everything. But what they gotta do, if you want to satisfy a lot of people, get the state to open that hole up to, to eight feet. Just put a tube in there, not that size hole. And that's that's what it is. You get out and see it. If it, it's, it plugged up the night before last, something was caught into that thing. It would take more, no more than a Christmas tree could stop that hole shooting that. Just oh, sure. stop it. Somebody pulled it up, and then the, the water the water got away. So that that would solve a lot of problems, uh, and everybody here would probably agree with that. Uh, if the water the water's nice, if you can keep it moving, but when it sets there, then you're in trouble. But just a, a thought. Just a thought. We've heard about trespassers. You're concerned about trespassers. Where are they coming from? Don't tell me. What do you do about them? Call the police. That's why I'm really sorry. Don't ask me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me. <laughs> so that I mean that's a that's a that's a legal yeah. enforcement problem. Yeah. Well beyond the scope so of the planning board that we could possibly control. Had, I mean we're in town, but we've had break-ins along Farmwood Drive and I'm sure you know where that is. So, so we back right up. Mm -hmm. So I mean so I, I can say that um, so you're in, in our uh, in our in our projects in uh, Chile and in Gates, uh, I know in the you know ten or eleven years since you know I started representing Mark, uh, I don't know that I've ever had any to deal with any issues with, with, uh, resulting from any criminal activity. So certainly we, we you know I, I I deal with all the you know I deal with all the all the tenant issues for Mark too, um, and. You know, I can't recall in my history, in like to the 10 or 11 years, of us, you know, having to, you know, get rid of the tenant because of criminal activities. Because that's always a clause in the lease, is that you can evict someone if, if they've been cited, if, if the police have come to the, come to the unit, or they've been got issued a, issued a citation. That's always a clause in our leases, that we can evict them on that basis. And I, myself, have never brought um, an action in court to, to evict someone on that basis. So we, we haven't had that issue. That probably speaks to, uh, you know, the quality of tenants that we've had in those projects. And that's what we hope to have in this project. <coughs> but that's not what we're concerned about. We're concerned about the people that are going to affect your people. <coughs> You're bringing in. Okay. It's the people that are going to affect your people. Uh -huh. So I appreciate I'm, your I'm concern. I'm thinking for you now. Hey, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate we have the problem. I appreciate your concern. Noted. Thank you. We have a big problem with it. We have a big problem The police are up and down our street like it's, you know. I have a question. You mentioned foot traffic to Main Street from the, from the village to the stores and restaurants. Are you going to have sidewalks and cross in, you know extra crossing area that's a little more safe because I live right over there and it's yeah. kind of not really there is these presenters all right I think I, you're talking about going up to Main Street yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. so here right um so the path that they're coming from the development is to go down up and then down to the north up the sidewalks to the uh, signalized intersection, which they have pedestrian crossing signals, and it should be that. It's existing. So um, there's no need to have them cross mid-block here, which we call that between intersections or anything. They would come up and go this way. Um, it would be the safest and best route to the village. One of the um, yes. Apology accepted. 
Um, one thing that I, you know, when people are addressing as far as trespassing, as far as, um, you know, people concerned about the light, the added people, all of that, you know, right now we've got all woods behind us, you know what I mean? We've got this wonderful open space and it's been like that for a very, very long time. Um, one thought is that the developer, if this project finally does come to fruition and does get approved by all the levels, um, putting a line of evergreens or something around the, you know, the entire, the entire uh, development to cut down on light, to cut down on noise, to cut down on people cross it, passing through, cutting it, you know, is that something that you guys can require? You know, that wouldn't cost them that much money to do, but it would help aesthetically for the entire neighborhood that is part of the reason people don't want it there, you know? That is the whole point behind public commentary is for you to give us the talking points that we will take back to the developer. When he comes back to us for our final site plan approval, we can address those issues with him at that time. Part of the site plan submission for approval will be a full blown landscape plan. That will be part of the submission. So all your comments are will be can be noted and will be considered by the board. Um, just for the education of the public, you are not privy to all the documents that we receive, but um, for this project, there has been a full-blown engineering analysis for traffic control, stormwater management, domestic water, and sanitary, sanitary sewer systems. <coughs> These documents are thorough, extensive, boring as I read, but they are based upon sound, commonly accepted mathematical principles that all engineers use to design projects of this nature. Again, they are theoretical. They are based upon long studied mathematical models. They do soil analysis. They've done test pits to see what the infiltration rate of the soils are. And according to these reports, and I've read every single one of them, in theory, there will be no water leaving this site. So, no runoff. That's what the retention ponds are for. All developers are required to control the water on their site. The overflow goes into the town systems. Eventually, ultimately, if there is a state system, that is the next level, that's where the water goes. Is it infallible? No. Mother Nature can be cruel. As we know right now, the water runs on an incredible highs. No developer, no engineer is going to be able to design a project that is foolproof. It cannot happen because Mother Nature cannot be beat. But using every mathematical engineering tool at their disposal is what they have to use in order to get through these design development process. And we, as a board, go through all these calculations and with, in consultation with Will, we, as he stated, do everything in our power to make sure that a development of this nature is in the best interest of the village and all of its neighbors. So, I don't mean to come off as harsh, but I do want everyone in this room to understand we do hear you, we listen to you, and we will, to the best of our ability, work with the developer to bring the best project to the village of Webster that he can and we can give to the village for now and for the future. I'd just like to add one comment. All of these documents are public uh, information. You can come in my office anytime you want and view them. If you want me to make copies for you, we've got to charge you. But if you want to look at them for free, then as long as you want, you can come in and I have all the documents that they were talking about. Anybody can come in and view them. It's all public information. I'm done. So, any further comments?
comments, questions, or issues from the public? Our guests yeah, I promise not to do about this time. State your name um, and stand up. Oh, Please. sorry. Lance Howard, 1041 Fawn Drive, actually, right at the bottom there. I was just wondering what their thought of all this as far as, I mean, I assume they think it's a good thing. I mean, just, yes. your, just your general No, absolutely. I, I went as far as to um, visit Mark's development in Gates. We've met numerous times with the engineer um, and Mark. Mark's been uh, in front of the board probably at least twice that I know of. Um, I attended the, uh, the open house. I met with uh, Mark's engineer, with Will, with our DPW superintendent, because I had additional questions um, with respect to the infiltration ponds. I talked to a gentleman who actually um, works with Ryan Holmes, because I needed to educate myself regarding the infiltration ponds. And um, after meeting, we met for probably at least an hour and a half um, with, with Jack, their engineer, and I was very satisfied with all the responses I got from everything that I, all the questions I had. And I went to the, his development in, in Gates in the middle of the summer. Um, we had a drought, and everybody's lawns were burnt, except his development in Gates. It was pristine. I was very, very impressed. I talked to at least, I would say probably three or four other developers throughout Monroe County um, and asked them if they knew Mark. They all knew Mark and uh, had very positive things to say about him. He had a very good reputation. So from a comfort level um, with, this, with this project, I'm very comfortable with it. I also um, spoke with probably every business um, and, a, and a multitude of residents, um, especially on East Main Street. And everybody was in favor of it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sure. I have one last comment I'd like to make. <laughs> My name is John Nardi. I live in Heartland States across from where this project is going to be. I don't have much of a problem now with the project as it's being explained, other than I have I find fault, I think, with you people on the board, that a better tolling job should have been done amongst the neighbors that live in that area. I never knew this was even going to happen. Uh, he told me I had to read it, some publication that the village puts out there to know it was, never heard of it. I've lived, probably here, well, I've lived here, here 15 years, here and I never knew this was even going to happen until we recently saw the signs that these gentlemen put up, and you also put some stuff in our mailbox, I guess. But I think you guys should have done a better job of getting, polling the neighbors, just you know, to make sure everybody was happy. It doesn't seem to be a happy person in here that lives in that area. That's all I gotta say.
Probably so. I don't know how you get rid of heat. Get that micro. <laughs> Or the, or, did I <laughs> or the geese there first? It's a point of reference. You're not going to have geese over there because, like he said, there's not going to be holding water there. I've got a, an acre pond that in my in my property down in East County. Never had a geese on that goose on it ever. Ducks, yes, but geese, no. I mean, there was always a problem with, ever since the whole stormwater pollution prevention plan program came into effect, where developments have to now control their stormwater with the construction of retention ponds. There's always been that yin yang problem when you create water to attract water uh, The state, unfortunately, is turns a blind eye when it comes to pests, Canadian geese. It's just beyond the realm of planning board's capability. We already have a ton back there anyway. What's that? With the wetlands, we already have a ton anyway. It's a major flight path, so I don't think this is going to make that easy. And I'm all about not having it there, but I don't think that's going to make a huge difference. I mean, there's some things we can work with, and some things we can work with. With the ponds, real quick. The way they're designed, they're supposed to grow those okay. high cattails and, and vegetation around the pond. The problem is when the developers come in and they keep the ponds pristine and not really functioning the way they're designed to be functioned because those cattails actually act like a filter. So all of the contaminants that enter into the water, those uh, the vegetation filters it out before it leaves and enters into the tributary that we're having a problem with. The tributaries go right to our lakes. And guess what? That's our drinking water. And so we're doing everything we can possible to make sure that the ponds not only handle volume but quality. So, but when you mow around it and you take down those plants, the geese go, awesome, I'm going to have a family here. And they do. The, uh, but when you have the high grass, because of predators that hide in the high grass, the geese don't hang out. They go somewhere else, like white it's the shop, where you shop apparently. So, um, and the other thing, like mosquitoes and things like that, that, it's brilliant the way God works with these ponds, because it is a natural uh, bio-retention pond in the sense that like waterfowl will fly in and they'll have the eggs of fish on their web feet and drop them into the ponds. The fish grow and eat the mosquitoes. So it's a natural cycle that takes place in the pond. It's absolutely amazing. That's why you see people fishing in these things because there's fish in the pond. You say, how do the fish get there? The, the fowl bring the fish in when they land in the water and the eggs come off their feet. There you go. Final jeopardy, you'll win. So. <laughs> Is that, is that going to be in the minutes? <laughs> <laughs> okay, is there any further commentary on questions? Mm -hmm. Issues or concerns from the general public? Can we yes. just leave the map up when everything's done so we can take a peek at it? Absolutely. Before? Okay. Are we all good? Everybody had your state to peace question? All right. So, back to the board. Any final questions? Issues, concerns, state now. Our mayor <coughs> goal tonight is for us to make a recommendation for the uh, recommendation for the board of appeals for a variance to build 14 structures and lot that is currently zoned to 15. Uh, I'm sorry, 14 structures.
just as a point of reference also, you have to contact the assessor's office for a merger. Yeah. Uh, two tax parcels into one. Sure.